The system in figure 9 is in equilibrium. A mass of 225 kgs hangs from the end of the uniform strut whose mass is 45 kgs. Find A, the tension in the cable and the horizontal and vertical components exerted on the strut by the hinge. Actually, we are going to do the same question here. Alright, so the, the diagram looks like this. You have a strut here which is raised at an angle of what? At an angle of uh, 45 degrees, somewhere there. 5 degrees. And it is attached to a given tension which is raised at an angle of 30 degrees. By the end of this strut, a tension is also attached to an object of mass 2 to 5 kgs. So this strut is pointed or is attached on the hinge, something like this. Okay, so the first thing which comes in, in our mind, we have to understand the forces that act at a given point. Have to know all the forces that act on a given point. So I will start by the force which acts on the hinge here. So the force which acts on the hinge will be drawn like this. This is my strut, which is like that. Then that is the ground. This is your 45 degrees. So in this case, since here that's where the hinge is, it always produces a force which is moving like that. And I'll name this force as H. We also have a force which is being produced by the object here, which I'll name it as M2G. There is a reason why I've named it as M2G. So also the strut is saying its mass is 45 um, kgs. Hence, I'm going to put it in the middle somewhere like there. So I'll say this is M1G. All right. We also uh, have a force produced by the tension on that part, which I'm going to name it like T, and I can resolve it into its components. How am I going to resolve it? I will have that component and this component, which is raised at a 30 degree angle. We know that here, Tension is attached to a given object, and you have to find the angle which is there for to resolve the force produced by the tension from the object there. So what we do, you can find the angle which is here, and how do you do it? You are going to say 45 plus x is equal to 180, because this is a straight line. So this is going to give us 180 minus 45 degrees, which is what? 135 degrees. Okay, we continue, we continue, we continue, we continue. So we are going to observe that the angle which is here and the angle which I have found here, which is 135 degrees, if you add this angle and that one, actually it's one and the same like the angle which can be where, which can be that part, and it's 135 degrees. So if you want to find the angle which is here, whereby the tension is raised at this same theta. This is going to be the addition of this we subtract from 180, of which if you, are, if you are to say theta, here I'll say theta plus 135 plus 60 is equal to 180, because every one of us, I think, by this time around knows that a triangle is added to 180 degrees. So this is going to give us theta will be equal to 1. 80 minus 165 hence theta is going to be equal to 15 degrees meaning that the angle which will be there is going to be what our 15 degrees reason being is because we want this angle to help us resolve the tension which is being what uh, attached to, to the object at the end there okay we continue we continue we continue so every one of us i think this time around knows that this is what 15 degrees so 
I've resolved this tension into its components by saying this is going to be my what? My t sine theta. That is going to be my t cos theta. Reason being the angle is the on the x-axis, hence this is going to carry a cos. So if I am to come up at the end here, I'll also resolve this one into its components. I'm talking about this tension which is moving away from the object. That is also T. So when resolving this one, it's more like I'll do it like this. I'll do it like this. I have a tension there and this is my end of a strut. So if tension is acted at an angle of 15 degrees, what do we do? Actually, this is going to be your x and the y is going to be in that direction. Hence, this t, with the help of 15 degrees, it will carry t sine 15 degrees. And I'll put this sine 15 degrees t on that point. This is going to be t sine 15 degrees. Okay. So, if you are to resolve, the other force is going to be along the what? The strut of which it won't bring any effects. Okay. So I've resolved the forces into their components. Minus one force now. Only one force has been uh, excluded. We want to resolve it into its component. What is that force actually? It's the force which is being produced by the hinge here. So if I'm to resolve this force taking the theta to be on that point, I'll have two forces. The other force is going to be like that. This I'll name it as the force on the hinge in Y. The other force is going to move or point in that direction. This force is going to be F on the hinge in X direction, something like that. So if we are to continue in this case, the forces that act at every point will be like this now. Here the tension is attached on the ground. This is our T. And then that is your 15 degrees. We have said this force is going to be T sine 15 degrees. That is your 30 degrees. So I'll say that is your T sine 30 degrees. And then the force which is pointing like that is going to be T. Going to be my T cos 30 degrees on the hinge here. This is H. I've resolved it again. Say the force on the hinge in Y and the force on the hinge, force on the hinge in X. So here it is 45 degrees. But we don't know the angle which the hinge is raised at. Now, the issue is now coming in whereby you want to make every force perpendicular to the displacement. So I'm saying we haven't been given any length. In this case, this is going to be what? This is going to be your L. Why? Because you don't know the length which is there. I will label this one as my, my L, like that. So I'll come up with a simple diagram just explaining the forces that act on the hinge and I have to make them perpendicular to the what? The displacement which is L. How is it going to look like? It's going to look like this. So we are saying this is the hinge. And always the forces on the hinge doesn't produce what? Moments. So I'll put my T sine 15 there. And then since this force is pointing downwards, this one which is M2G, and the other one in the middle points vertically downward again, which is M2, or sorry, M1. G. I have to resolve it into what its components making it perpendicular to the what to the displacement from the pivot. So that is your 45 degrees. So if you want to resolve every force into its components, what do you do? We're going to say this is going to be your m1 g cos theta. It has carried cos reason being this is also 45 degrees. Even that part again, it is going to be m2 g cos theta. This theta and that one, they are over T, 45 degrees. So I've resolved the forces making them perpendicular to the what? To the displacement. Okay, so now you come to how to answer the question now. So they're saying find the what? Find the tension, of which you know that the tension is raised at that point, which is T. Then also the tension is raised at this point, which is 
80 degrees then this is your t that is your t sin 30 and also your t cos 30 here you also have the force which is pointing like that from the hinge which is the force on the hinge in x and the other force here the force on the hinge in y so here we are trying to make a question simple in such a way that we want to find the tension how are we going to find the tension in this case first of all i'm going to say the summation of forces in x has to give you what zero what do we mean all the forces in x has to give you zero in this case we only have the forces in x like this and that one then i'll say the force on the hinge in x has to be equal to the, the tension cos 30 degrees we are going also to say the summation of forces in y has to give us zero what are the forces in y the forces that are pointing upwards has to be equal to the forces that are pointing downwards in this case i'll say the force on the hinge has to be equal to this force is making the system move and clockwise so it has to come to the other side hence it will have t sine theta plus m 1g plus m 2g like that okay so the commonest thing here is l l and that other l they can go so you are going to end up with t sine 15 degrees is equal to m1 is 45 g cos 45 degrees over 2 plus m2 is what 2 2 5 g cos 45 degrees so here what i'll do i will factorize what is common in this case in this case what is common is the cos 45 g then i'll say t sine 15 degrees is equal to g which is 9.8 cos 45 degrees open bracket 45 over 2 plus 2 2 5 like that so this is going to bring us to a simple calculation like you have to divide this part by sine 15 degrees even that part again by sine 15 degrees so you cancel that part hence you are going to end up with t is equal to 9.8 cos 45 degrees open bracket 45 over 2 plus 2 2 5 over sine 15 degrees and that actually can bring you to the final answer so since i don't have a calculator you can just plug in your values and i'm going to find what is the value of t so in continuation if you want to find the horizontal and the vertical components just use these simple formulas this one for your y and that one for your x hence you know the value you're going to find where there is the tension just replace t here and you find the horizontal component which is a force on the hinge in x then on the issue of forces in y you're going to say a force on the hinge in y is equal to tension you know it then add that one that marks the end of this comma simple question